So now we're going to take a rather dark turn and something that is steeped in South Africa's own history and not that past. We take you back 11 years um, when the headlines, of course, were rocked by the death of A.B. Puckies, who was murdered, strangled by his very own mother at the age of 20. Now comes a film adaptation of a woman put through the penal system, tried for murder, but ultimately driven by an unflinching love of her son. And what a story to tell on film. Joining us now is the film's director, Darren Joshua, and Jared Chadult, who plays A.B. Puckies. Gentlemen, it's a tough one. Uh, just trying to take myself back to that time because there was something just so powerful when the, when the story first broke. Maybe I can start with you, Darren. Why do this story? Why tell the story? And what went through your mind when you first started trying to wrap your head around it? Well, I was really, I, I got, um, you know, the script, uh, I got approached by the producers. And um, obviously, because of the content, you know, I was very reluctant yeah. to do something like this. And I kept on turning away from it. Um, and at the last moment, they asked me to meet with Ellen herself. And I was like, okay. And I still wasn't convinced. I mean, within 10 minutes, I changed my mind because she, she convinced me. Um, she felt that the story needed to be told as broadly as possible to, even if she can help one person, then she would have done a job. And when she said that to me, I was like, okay, yeah, maybe it is time to, to tell the story. The story, um, then of course, you've got to actually bring it to life and sink yeah. into that time, that space. No more so than for you, Joshua, playing AB. What has this process been like? What attracted you to the, the story? Well, again, man, like uh, the subject matter of, of, you know, drugs and addiction, on the Cape Flats. Uh, I think that's initially what, um, what attracted me, you know, to wanting to be a part of this film. And also, I mean, just wanting to be a part of something that is much, much greater and much bigger than yourself. And that can also, you know, um, <clears throat> in some way or shape or form, you know, uh, uh, change something, you know, in, 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 in the world or in, uh, with the people of South Africa, you know. So that's, that's generally what, uh, you know, attracted me to this, to this film. And something this, this deep and dark and intense as an yeah. actor, you must be like, yeah, now I can really test myself. How much of a test was it? How, how deep and dark did you have to go? Um, I, you know, for me, it wasn't... I was excited to tell the story, you know. That, that, that's in, that, that was the initial excitement for me. But um, in terms of the preparation and intensity of the character, I think, you know, I spent, I spent uh, you know, I did a lot of uh, um, inwards uh, searching, you know. Sure. And, um, you know, I spent a lot of time with Auntie Alan herself. I spent a lot of time with Abia and his friends, you know, just to get an understanding of what he was like and what he was like before drugs and after using drugs, you know. And so that gave me a very cool, uh, a very nice understanding of, of who he was in terms of, in terms of me, you know, coming up with a personality and characteristics for him. And uh, I mean, it was it was it was challenging at times, but for the most part, I think uh, I think we, we we did it justice, man. I think we did a good job. Do you feel that pressure when it is a real story? How much creative license do you take to tell that story? Um, how do you find a balance between us? Uh, it's a tricky one to do because you know, like all this trauma with Ellen and her son happened across about seven or eight years. We're trying to do it in You've two. You've got to tell a story. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. Two, in two hours. Um, so 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 it's just important sitting down with Ellen. Mm -hmm. and finding what those key turning points were um, and then um, and then kind of condensing it in a way that 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 still works as, as, a, as a film you know um, so yeah it was, it was tricky and the, the I would say creative license wise you know we, we got about probably 80 to 90 percent of the truth here and that, wow. that 10 to 20 percent is, is is how time unfolds which we we lie about you know what I mean it's just how yeah. did how did Ellen feel about the, the end product <sighs> We, um, <clears throat> we organized a private screening for her, um, and she, she essentially had final cut. You know, if there was, any, wow. if there was anything that she really felt um, was out of place or wasn't truthful, um, we were prepared to remove it. Um, it it's about a two-hour film. It took us about three hours to get through it with her, uh, obviously because there were certain scenes that struck certain nerves and that. Yeah. Um, but in the end, we were, she, she felt it was a, a truthful representation, be it in a two-hour version of an eight-year journey. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she gave us an endorsement. Gentlemen, I have a feeling this one is going to make its mark on uh, cinematic history as well, just as big as the story was. But as both of you have highlighted, this is something that needs to be spoken about yeah. and as, as broadly as possible. So well done on finding this platform and getting it right. Um, yeah. An incredible story to tell, and it sounds like an incredible achievement as well. So well done, guys. Cool. Thank you Thanks. so much.